Yeah. So let's watch our senior pastor as he brings us the word. Once again, it is a delight for the All Nations family globally to come together and gather under the name of Jesus Christ. We are gathered together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to worship, to fellowship, and to love our wonderful Savior together. It is so exciting for us to do this. And ever since we, uh, we started this, God has blessed the denomination in many, many, many ways. And I want to say a big thank you to the organizers uh, for putting together a splendid appreciation for us. All of you responded from your branches. Um, you sent offerings and, um, and donations. We want to say a big thank you. May God Almighty bless you and fulfill the desires of your heart. And you also sent cards. And I, I always share my cards with everyone. So here we go. Thank heaven for thoughtful people like you. God bless. This is coming from Pastor Eziaku and Pastor DK, Grandma Abigail, Esther, and Sarah. Finding words to thank you isn't easy, but perhaps these heartfelt words will help to show your thoughtfulness will always be remembered with more gratitude than you could ever know. Happy Appreciation Day, Pastor DK and Pastor Ziaku Odimoko. Hope you feel appreciated in a special way. During this time, we set aside to express our gratitude for your faithful leading and sleep and selfless serving. God bless you richly. Lots of love. ANFGC Kitchener. This card says, while it may be easy to simply say the word of God, to put it into practice, into perspective, and preach it is a very special gift. Thank you for using your gift to help enrich our lives. With love, Mark and Audrey service. With faith in your heart and God in your life, there is so much that you can achieve. Trust in him. Collins, Florence, Rosemont, Rich Lord, and Renee Enning. This one says, thank you with sincere thanks and appreciation from Nikita and uh, Daniel Gahunde. Happy Appreciation Day, Mama and Papa. Again, um, one to my wife and one um, uh, for me, and it says, with sincere thanks and appreciation, Nikita and Gahunde. This card says, not everyone can do what you do, but anyone can see that what you do makes a wonderful difference. And this is coming from the Browns. The family table is a blessing, a gentle reflection of the goodness and abundance of God's love. May this thanksgiving bring you joy, knowing you are blessed with a love that knows no end. From Cynthia Clark. This card says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Your partnership in ministry is a beautiful example of how two are better than one. When the Lord is at the center, you are both so very special to us with thankful hearts and a prayer for God's blessing for you 
is coming from Mr. and Mrs. Emmanuel Saki. Thanking God for you and the wonderful ways he has made you a blessing to so many. And this is from Pastor Gilbert, Amayo, and family. Once again, my wife and I say a big thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We started a series which we've been doing, we've been studying together, and I believe God has used it to open your eyes and bless you so much, and we'd like to continue. The theme being, what does it mean to live under grace? And the topic today is, what is New Testament giving? I want us to pick up from where we left off last month. We were looking at Mark 12, 17 before we left off. So I want us to pick this up from the same Bible passage, but we'll read it from another gospel. So let's look at Matthew 22, 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth, nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. This is an interesting Bible passage. The subject matter here is taxes, right? That was what they were discussing. In other words, should a Jew pay taxes to a foreign power? Should a religious Jew pay taxes to the Roman emperor? And Jesus answers them by showing them that your money has several duties or obligations. A believer's money has several duties. Number one, it has an obligation to God. It has a duty to government. It has personal obligations, and it has family responsibilities. But I want us to focus on God and government. Last month, we also learned that you cannot Carbonize your parents. You have to give them what is due to them. And not say that because of giving, I've paid my tithe. There's nothing left for you. All the money that should have been given to you, I have used it to give an offering to God. So Jesus show this religious zealot that you cannot refuse any of your obligations. You are required to meet every one of them squarely. You need to take care of your family. You need to take care of your personal obligations. You need to take care of your civil or governmental obligations. And you also have obligations to God and those ones cannot be sacrificed not under any pretense. So no one can refuse to pay 
tithes under the guise of paying taxes. Neither can you refuse to pay respect to your parents and help them, support them financially under the guise of, of you giving the money to God. And to help you get it straight, let's do a little word study. The word render. When Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God, that let's look at it. In the Greek is apodidomi. And it means to fulfill one's duty to someone. Give what is due. Give back. Recompense. Restore. That's what the word Jesus used actually means. When he said, render, or when he says, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's, he is saying that you must fulfill your duty to Caesar, and you must fulfill your duty to God. So in other words, the follower of Christ has the obligation both to God and to civil authorities. We are required to fulfill one and leave the other. No, we are required to fulfill both. One should not suffer at the expense of the other. But take note of this. According to Jesus, giving to God is a duty. Not optional. Not something you do only if you choose to. Not something you do if you are led by the Spirit. Because you are under grace, not under law. It is a duty, says Jesus the Savior. It is an obligation for the believer. Do you know that Christ says, that says Christ who shed his blood for you, who gave you that grace? So one may ask, Pastor, show me where he says that. Again, let's look at Matthew twenty-two twenty-one. And they said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. The word render is apodidomi, which means to fulfill one's duty to someone. It means to give what is due. It means to give back, to recompense, to restore. So believer in Christ, kindly get this straight. That Jesus said to them that they were Jews, they were under the government of the Romans, the Roman emperor and he had exacted certain responsibilities. And those must be fulfilled without neglecting to give what belongs to God to him. If you look at John 1, 17, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. I want you to think about it for a moment. Remember that the law came through Moses. That is how the law came. The law came through Moses by grace and truth by Jesus Christ our Lord. And he is the one who says giving to God is an obligation. If you look at Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. The law. From Moses and the prophets continued until the dispensation of John. 
When John came, Jesus came, and a new dispensation began. And that is the kingdom of God, which is still being preached. Do you know that Jesus sent them to go preach the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven? So you notice that that stretches till now. Don't let anybody with false dispensation um, tell you that he doesn't. You notice that everybody is pressing in, into the kingdom. So you can see that Jesus did not cancel giving in this new dispensation. The one who brought grace and truth says, giving to God is to fulfill one's duty to God. So that does not sound optional to me. Does it sound optional to you? The one whose grace you are under and living by, as a believer says, the believer's giving is what is due to God. You don't do God a favor by your giving. It is your godly Christian duty. It is a believer's loving obligation. The man who fully understand and the man who fully understood giving in the Bible more than any man was David. And in First Chronicles 29:16, he made this profound statement: Oh Lord our God. All this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. This inspired someone to write the beautiful hymn, We give thee by thine own. Whatever the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone. And it is a trust, O oh Lord, from thee. It came from that passage. What did you bring into this world? If you look at Job 121, he perfectly understood it. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How true David's statement is. Everything we have is from God's hand. Everything we have is God's. Is, is it just the Old Testament that says that everything you have is given to you by God? No. The New Testament also says the same thing. In 1 Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Now if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? If someone gave you everything you have, Who gave them to you? Your car, your home, your wealth, your talents, your job, your bank account. Who gave them to you? Do you know? If you look at James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Every good gift, every good thing you have is a gift from God. Everything. No wonder Jesus says, render apodidomi to God as a duty and an obligation. You are not giving to God out of sympathy because God needs money, needs your money. You are 
to give to God and his work out of obligated love. What does that mean? You give out of a sense of responsibility, but motivated by love. If you look at Exodus 23, 15, you shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded you, at the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in it you came out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Do you know that he said, I brought you out of Egypt. You were slaves in Egypt. You worked without pay. Nobody paid you. Nobody paid slaves. But the day you left, I had asked you, or I had commanded you to ask of your neighbor things, their precious stuff. Who gave you that favor? You ask them, and have whatever you ask, silver, gold, shirt, raiment, they gave it. I prospered you. So when you appear before me, never appear empty. Your love for God is what motivates your giving. Your love for God's work is what motivates your giving. Your understanding of the supremacy of God in your life is what motivates your giving. Your love for God's church is what motivates your giving. So if you allow your money to control you, then what you do is to look for every excuse under the sun not to pay your tithes and to give generously to God's work because you are only allowing money to lead you or lead your heart away from God. Pastor, what do you say? What did you say? You heard me right. If money controls you, and you look for every excuse not to pay your tithes and give generously to God's work. You are only allowing money to lead your heart away from God. Why? Because in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus, please, Wait a minute. I'm a New Testament Christian. I'm saved by grace. I'm not under law, but under grace. So I don't pay tithes. But I give every now and then because I'm free from all that. And Jesus will respond, son, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus, are you saying if I don't pay my tithe and give offerings to build God's kingdom on earth, then my heart is not in the kingdom? Exactly, yes. If you don't pay tithes and give offerings in church, then your heart is not in church. Jesus, is that what you're saying? Yes. Because your heart follows your money. Your heart follows your money. Money does not follow the heart. It's the heart that follows money. Say, my heart follows my treasure. Say that with me. My heart follows my treasure. This is the reason Jesus says in Matthew 6, 19, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys 
and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This scripture is profound. Jesus says, invest in heaven. That's what he's saying. Invest in the kingdom. Invest in heaven. How do you invest in God's kingdom? In many ways, but in this context, he's speaking in terms of giving. You can say, oh, I invest by playing in church. I invest by singing in church. I invest. Yes, all of that. But in this particular context, he is speaking to us in terms of giving. Without paying tithes and giving offerings, you are not investing in the kingdom of heaven. Rather, you are tying up all your treasure in bank accounts and stocks and homes on earth. So what would the end result be? You will end up where your treasure is. So invest in the kingdom because your heart will follow your treasure. If it is already in God's kingdom, then you know you are heaven bound. If your heart is not and you come up with all kinds of weird arguments, you are only deceiving yourself. So don't invest in the kingdom. Keep all your treasures to yourself in your bank accounts on earth. Your heart will follow your treasure on earth. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart shall be also. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 15 verse 8, these people draw near to me with their mouth and not honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And verse 9, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You notice that it is very easy to worship God with your mouth and not with your heart. How is that possible? One may ask. Because your money shows where your heart is. If you worship without your money, your heart is not in it. For where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. You worship, but don't pay tithes. You worship, but don't give offerings. That is worship without your heart. For if your money is not in your worship, your worship is vain. So many Christians worship God without their hearts being in their worship. They offer only the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of their lips. Because that sacrifice of praise cost them nothing. Just think of it. Is that not what David said not to do? Is that not what David admonishes us to abstain from? In 2 Samuel 24, 24, then the king said to Aruna, no, but I'll surely buy it from you for a price. No, will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which cost me nothing. So David bought the, tr the threshen floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so the Lord heeded the prayers for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. This is one of the most interesting 
stories in the Bible. And again, shows the heart of David. Such a unique man. A man whose heart for God was so great. Think of it for a moment. He was a king. And uh, he committed the sin. And on account of the sin, there was a plague. God was not happy. He had told him not to do it, and he did anyway. As we are all up to do from time to time. And David disobeyed God. And as a result, there was a plague. And people were dying left, right, center. Then he went before God in humility and said, God, please, I caused the sin. I'm the one. Deal with me and my family, but not the people. And the Lord said to him, go to this particular spot. I want you to offer a burnt sacrifice there. And if you do, it will stay the plague. And so this man, Aruna, was just minding his business. And here comes the king. A king everybody loved, except a few, those who followed Saul. It's always like that. Whenever there is a David, there is a Saul. And some will follow that Saul. So they were the ones probably who did not like him. But Aruna was so happy. Initially, probably he thought, what? And this favor for the king himself to come to mind place to pay me a visit or he could also have asked himself what have I done wrong here comes the king the king approaches and finally gets to him and and then he said what brought you here my lord and the king said you know what has happened, the coronavirus. You know people are dying. And we need, and, and, and I need to offer a sacrifice here. This is the spot the Lord showed me. This is the place the angel showed me. This is where that offering, that sacrifice ought to be offered. And it will appease God, and God will stop the plague. Do you know that the man said, oh, hallelujah. What a favor. I want to give you the land for free. I have cows. I want to give you a cow for the offering. I want to give you wood for the fire. I'll even help you gather stones on this land. I offer everything to you freely since you are giving it to God. Please take it. David said, no. Do you know that as a pastor, over the years, I've trained myself never to take an offering without me participating in it. Do you know that I cannot offer a sacrifice to God that costs me nothing? We learned this from David, but many of us, when a church is building, and people are 
pledging huge sums of money to make it a possibility they don't want to be part of. And yet they want God, whose presence fills that place, to bless them. When a contribution is being made, whatever it is, to support missions, to support God's work, some know. But this David could have, if David were like most of us, we would jump up and down and say, hallelujah. God has heard my prayer. Somebody has offered it freely. I didn't, it didn't cost me anything. And, and David said, no, I will never, I will never offer anything to God that costs me nothing. I pray that we have that heart. Instead of us looking for excuses, you notice when Jesus said, Apodidomi, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God. See, they, they asked him a question. It had nothing to do with God. They said, are we to pay taxes? And he, but he said, yeah. But you cannot switch it. You cannot say, oh, because I have to pay taxes, I don't have to pay my tithe. Because I have to give money to my parents, I don't have to pay tithes. Or because I pay tithes, I don't have to pay taxes. Or because I pay tithes, I don't have to support my parents. And on and on and on. So you notice that. And Jesus was not part of the Old Testament. The laws and the prophets were until John the Baptist. After that, a new dispensation. What dispensation? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God dispensation. And we are children of the kingdom. We are men of the kingdom. We are in the kingdom is the reason we pray, come thy kingdom be done thy will on earth. So this is the era that Jesus says, render unto Caesar, pay taxes. The government doesn't even ask for your permission. If, if you are on payroll, they take it before they give you their, your, um, their leftover. And you've never been angry about it, you've not gone to um, fight. You've not gone to Parliament House to argue. You just take it, but when it comes to God, he must always receive the short end of the stick. No, but those of us, kingdom children, those who are of the kingdom of God, we have come to the realization that what belongs to God is a duty. And our tithe is a duty, our offerings are duties, and we will discharge them because we love him. There's nothing that we have today that we brought into this world, nothing. The suit you are wearing, the suit I'm wearing. I did not come into this world in a suit. Imagine you were born with your pants on. Do you know that your mom will pass out to say that this is an apparition? This is not right. This, there's some, something strange here. We were born naked to be provided for by an all-sufficient God, a God who is so breasted, El Shaddai who feeds all of us, who provides for us. Do you know that the lion of the fields and all the animals, they look up to him for their daily meal? 
And he said, ask the Father to give us this day our daily bread. And so we are born naked for God to clothe us and to provide for us. Before you know, you have millions to your account. In the last little while, one lovely sister came to me to, my wife was there, and she said, do you know that on account of your teaching and guidance and the ministry, we are millionaires? Saying God has blessed them. Yesterday, I was chatting with one of the brothers, said God has prospered me so much that this is the project I'm doing back home and God is blessing me on a daily basis. And this, and many years back, we will pray and prophesy and say that God will raise millionaires and people look at us, say, wow. Even Dr. Dick Mills also said it a few times. Do you know that many have become millionaires? So all these things came from him. We did not create them. He gave us the ideas. He gave us the health. He gave us the strength. He gave us the job. He gave us the investment strategies. He gave us all these things so we could prosper. Doesn't the Bible say that? Listen to God, listen to his prophets, and you will prosper. The word of God has prospered us. The word of God has really brought so much to us, and we need to be grateful. So we have found out today that Jesus did not cancel giving for those he brought grace to. Because the law and the prophets continued from the time of Moses till the time of John the Baptist. After that, a new dispensation was ushered in called the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom dispensation. And to those people, Jesus said that render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are of God. So today, one more time, God has taught us um, by his word that we have obligation. We have obligations, duties, some to God, some to the government, some to family, some to self. So please don't offer sacrifices and offerings to God that cost you nothing. Don't worship with your mouth alone when your heart is not in it. Your heart follows your treasure. So where your money is, that's where your treasure is. So is your money in your worship? Do you pay tithes? Do you give offerings? So let us pray. And for some of us, we need to repent. Some of us, we need to double up. Some of us, we are sporadic. Some of us, we are not consistent. We do it today and for a moment, we, uh, we, we stop it. So, Mama Rose, come up and let us begin, rise up and pray. Kariando sanda katin besende, kariakakuto kondo soko kite kenda, ba ariando kori se kete ketiaka, kariando raba koto raba koto raba kamda raba kite bakuto kusi keteka, kari kese kenda. Lord, we apologize, Lord. We're sorry, we repent. Let's begin by thanking God for who he is. 
and his provision for our life begin to thank god you know what the lord has done providing keeping protecting father we give you worship father we thank you we bless you for loving us father we thank you for the gift of salvation we thank you for protection father we thank you that you have supplied our needs according to your riches father we don't lack any good thing father we thank you for our homes we thank you for the clothes that you've given to us father we bless you for the food that you put on our table we thank you for our cars father we thank you for how you have brought riches in our way we give you worship and glory and honor you are such a good god a faithful god a mighty god a glorious god a god who loves his children father your word has come your word declares that we should not worship you my god without our hearts in the sky my god tonight even we confess for those who have been withdrawn from you when it comes to money my god we pray that you forgive and you you will cleanse us from every unrighteousness my god i pray that you will, will make us whole tonight my god some who withdraw from church my god even because of money those who want to give when it comes to projects paying our tithe giving an offering my god tonight may you wash us may you cleanse us in the sakataya reba sunde rebo shekatua in the kabos kandaya reba kuskanda we came into this world with nothing reba but God, all riches have been abound unto us, my God. And therefore, from tonight, we pray that Lord we will worship you uh, not with empty words but even with our substance. Uh, but God will be so glad to give to you, uh, will not help appear before you with empty hands my God give us a given heart a willing heart a heart that is will give cheerfully to the work of God oh, to promote your kingdom to make your name a praise on the earth to give to missions, to give to projects at Brasoka, because all that we have, it is you who have given unto us. And therefore, from today, we will give, oh God, with cheerful hearts. Thank you, Father, for the privileges that you've given unto us in every area of our lives to commit to you and to your work. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your holy name. As we pray in the name of Jesus, we ask, O oh God, that from today we will give deliberately, we'll give because we know it is your will for us to give, even in this dispensation of grace. Father, we are so thankful that Jesus said we must render to you what belongs to you, even in this dispensation called Kingdom Dispensation, the Dispensation of Grace. We thank you, we bless you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let's bless God with our tithes and our offerings and uh, let's do it now let's do it cheerfully with let's do it with understanding because this is the Lord's doing and his marvelous in our eyes so wherever you are join in and when you test to seven seven nine seven seven you will definitely be um, you will definitely um, be given the prompts and then you can pick and choose your city so you can give or you can call 1-888-263-4272. And then I want you to know this, that um, after this we'll take the communion and we will give our thanksgiving offering. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I'll call on 
on Pastor Gilbert to pray as we give our offerings. Father, we are so grateful for your love. We thank you that everything we have comes from you. We came into this world naked. Lord, you are the one who has given us favor to, to have everything that we have. You're giving us favor on the job, in our businesses, in everything we touch, you've caused it to prosper, all because of you. You have saved our soul also from dying, and you have protected us throughout this pandemic. And for that, we are grateful. Therefore, Lord, with a grateful heart, we've come to you with our tithes and with our offering. And we are sowing it into thy kingdom. Father, we know that you will cause our heart to follow where our treasures is from this day. Thank you, Lord, for the grace that you have been that has been released upon us because of this message. We will give and we will be a cheerful giver and you will be pleased with us. Receive this offering in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So please come out and drop your offering at the altar. So, we believe that God Almighty, drop it. God Almighty will help you in everything you do. Now grab your, your communion elements. It's one of the things we've been doing. Our tradition was um, the first Sunday of the month communion but now every time we come together until this pandemic is over for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he took the cup of the supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So the element in your hand represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Father loved us so much, he gave him to the world as a gift, so that through him we have eternal life. We are therefore privileged that he did not spare himself, neither did God spare him, but he freely gave his life. And as a result, bought salvation for us, secured deliverance from the hand of the enemy is the reason this church praying and believing God, God has kept us from this coronavirus. Whether people get sick or not, he has healed them. He heals them. And we are so happy. And it's all because in him, we are safe. And so grab it and pray and thank God for it. For as I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, the great I am, mighty God, we thank you for the love bestowed upon mankind to give us your only begotten Son to stand in our stead and to take upon himself the penalty for our sin and to die for us. His body was broken 
to mend ours. Therefore, as we partake of this, let healing and strength and new life come upon us. Let the quickening grace of the Spirit of God quicken every mortal body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And when you are giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake of it together? In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Just do as often as you drink it in, in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the shed blood that washes and cleanses, that has paid the price and redeemed us from the hand of the enemy and from the coronavirus. We are thankful. We are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we partake of it together? Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. One of the things that this church has been doing for the past few years is to declare our faith in the keeping power of our God with a thanksgiving offering. We do it at the beginning of every month. We do it joyfully, not with compulsion. And, and I can tell you many have testified of the goodness of God and the breakthroughs they've encountered. How is it that this is one of the few places on earth where God has shielded everybody from the coronavirus. That is awesome. It's because we walk with him in liberality. We are thankful. And for the month of November, which is the 11th month, I believe God Almighty, as we are thanking him, as we are giving him a thanks, giving offering, will also make sure what you requested for at the beginning of the year is fulfilled. If there are outstanding ones, that all of them will be fulfilled. And so, but before I go down, to receive it and to pray. I want you to know this. This is our Daniel fast month and we're encouraging everybody. If you look at the schedule, you may think, oh, this is no prayer. It is because we had you in mind. We want you to participate. One hour of prayer for the first week, one and a half hours the second week, two hours the third week, and two and a half hours the, the, the fourth week, and then the sanctification day. And uh, wherever I might find myself, I want to lead this prayer from wherever, be it from Europe or Africa. And so I want you to participate, and God will bless you. Now, if you're ready to give your thanksgiving offering, wherever you are, if your pastor is standing in front, you can proceed and give it to your pastor. If you're online, you still participate in it, and God will surely bless you.
Shall we all rise? Heavenly Father, once again, your people have demonstrated their faith in you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, at the beginning of the year, we presented 12 requests. This is the 11th month. Father, I ask that everyone's request be granted. In the name of Jesus, Father, everyone who has been believing for a breakthrough, let that breakthrough come right now. In the name of Jesus, everyone expecting a miracle in marriage, let it be done in Jesus' name. Everyone expecting a breakthrough in finances, let it come forth in Jesus' name. Lord, I call forth their miracles of healing, of deliverance, of breakthroughs and prosperity, whatever the miracle might be, I, I call forth in the name of Jesus, let it come. We receive it. And for that reason, we give you a thanksgiving offering. Receive it and bless us. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon you now and always. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Tomorrow there will be our leaders training. Participate and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.